Hello and welcome back everyone. Happy Wednesday. Today we are going to be doing a rundown of Dev Diary number 5 for the co game codenamed Project Caesar, which at this point everyone kind of knows is Europa Universalis 5, but um, they're doing Europa Universalis 5 and we will continue with Europa Universalis 5. Um, what we are going to be taking a look at today uh, for that game is going to be the estate. Um, this isn't a very long dev diary, but we have other kind of news. Uh, the good people of Reddit uh, have cross-posted by user deleted. Oof. The good, the banned people of Reddit have aggregated uh, some of the forum posts by Johan, uh, which include a uh, spoil of the start date, uh, and it will be uh, this will be a lot of information on top of this regarding it. And so we're going to be going through both uh, these forum posts, which have been aggregated. We have 19 forum posts here and another 16 here, as well as the dev diary itself. Um, and so let's jump into it because there's a lot to get through. Today we will go into detail about one of the core systems of the game and how talk about how it stays work big dice but i notice i notice a distinct lack of happy wednesday terrible first of all there are four estates uh, in project caesar uh, which mostly map one-to-one -one with social class <laughs> map one-to-one -one with social class like irl okay nobility clergy burgers co and commoners oh he means with the the class uh in terms of yeah your your pops can be of several different types okay there's also the crown which represents the state itself each est uh, estate gains power based on the amount of population belonging to the estate which is modifiable by local attributes of where the population is where some nobles have very high power in certain areas or whether a specific city has entrenched burgers rights there okay the, we can see a nice little picture of crown, nobility, clergy, burgers, commoners. It looks very clean for early development. Um, this is uh, this is the estates part of the government view where you can see uh, their power, their current satisfaction. The equilibrium is trending towards ooh, equilibriums. We love them. Um, and what privileges they currently have. So I think that... I'm not sure which one of these is the equilibrium and which one's the actual. Uh, but we do see, for example, 86% and then is it moving towards... 95%? I'm guessing it's going to be at 95% and trending towards this 86%. In any rate, um, there's going to be an equilibrium and a value, and we love the transparency where we know what equilibrium we're trending towards at a glance uh, so that UI looks pretty clean. Um, every 1,000 nobles uh, gives uh, plus 50 estate power, while every 1,000 peasants gives a mere plus 0.05, but you're going to have way more peasants as a default. These are modifiable locally in every uh, location, as mentioned above, and uh, in the entire country by laws reforms and mostly and uh, notably the privileges that uh, you have given the estate and so you will massage and uh, kind of influence the power through various privileges and we will see just how many of them are it's gonna be super cool if there's a lot of them uh, I haven't really done a ton of the estate stuff in EU4 to be honest um, and so I can't really give a sort of commentary comparing what I'm seeing here to EU4 estates because that's kind of when I stopped playing the game all right, the total power of, or when they got reworked, I think. Leviathan. Any case, the total power of all four estates of the crown will add up to 100, but we have... Will they add up to 100% or will be the Paradox Math Classic 99%, which is the effective power they have? Depending on your crown power, you either get a scaling penalty or a scaling bonus on aspects of the cost of revoking estate privileges. Nice. The cost of changing policies and laws. Okay. The efficiency of the cabinet makes sense uh the expected costs of the court okay and and other things that's out of pocket other things all right well this sounds pretty cool um if the crown is uh power is weak you will need to have the estates really satisfied or you will not get much out of parliament to, uh any parliament you try and call so this is going to be interesting if it gives you mul multiple ways to play with like a strong crown or a weak crown or maybe having a weak crown is annoying, but it's a concession you have to make in order to achieve certain bonuses and this type of thing. Uh, each of the four estates has a current satisfaction and an equilibrium they'll move towards. Okay, some estates and some countries will have the estate satisfaction moving quicker to the equilibrium than others. Each estate has two factors per type of estate in which their satisfaction impacts the entire country, where satisfaction above 50% gives a scaling bonus and a below a scaling penalty. Okay, we do like the bonus. And then satisfaction above 50% gives a scaling bonus. So is this scaling according to how happy they are or scaling according to how strong they are? 
Uh, I guess uh, in either case, okay. Um, if the satisfaction is below 25%, the estate will not provide any levies. Most importantly, the estate's uh, satisfaction also impacts the satisfaction of the pops that belong to the estate, possibly causing rebel fa uh, factions or even civil wars. Nobility affects your prestige gain and your counter espionage. Clergy affects your research speed and your diplomatic reputation. I wonder if the research speed is consistent throughout the game. If it is, this may be an indication that the game's not going to be going past the Enlightenment era, right? Or maybe it's just, like... Because Enlightenment it was 1700s, if I'm not mistaken. Man, as a philosophy major, I should know this. Um, but the the if the clergy is the one that's constantly impacting research speed, then maybe this gives us a hint as to what the end date is. We know now that uh, the start date is going to be April 1st, 1337, um, which was confirmed by Johan in a forum post. We'll get uh, into more of these later. But um, So you've been a lot of speculation. We have figured out uh, the correct start date of April 1st, 1337. So um, that'll be interesting. Uh, impact your merchant power. Uh, and production efficiency from the burgers, commoners impacts your food production and your stab costs. Okay, uh, so what are the impact of satisfaction and equilibrium on a state? The privileges they get, the current stability, some reforms may impact them, some laws may, how you tax them, and much more. So there's going to be a lot of ways to do stuff, which means it's going to be fun, kind of, it, even if there's a meta way of doing stuff, it's going to be a lot of fun trying to figure out what the meta is when there are a lot of moving parts like this. Uh, some examples include clergy being happier with higher religious unity or burgers liking uh, having more market centers in your country. Estate privileges, then. Uh, you may feel forced to grant privileges to estates to be able to tax them more, and you may be forced to grant privileges to get support in Parliament. You may even be forced to get a privilege in order to have the louder cars. All privileges uh, impact the power of their estate, and many also increase the satisfaction and equilibrium. They have some e impact on gameplay, fitting the privilege, and also often also have impact on society value of the country. We see one here, an example with the free mobility for peasants, um, and then this is giving you know them being happier. Uh, it allows, uh, or sorry, this looks like 10% happiness for the someone and 20%. Lightning bolt for another people. Okay, monthly progress towards free subject plus ten allows pre peasants to migrate. Yes, noble noble estate equilibrium satisfaction is lower. I wonder who this is. I have ten percent happy for the burgers. I don't know, or not the burgers, but the peasants rather. Okay, uh, there are many different privileges and unique ones depending on what type and country you play. We mentioned taxes before, and while this is not a development diary where we will go into detail about economic system, no, it is important. Look at this saying. Hey, we're not going to go into this in this dev diary, like, like four inches from the bottom of the dev diary. Like, it's not obvious we're not going to go into it, but, um, <laughs> okay. It is important to mention that the estates of a country uh, have wealth that is increased by the amount of money that they have, uh, that you have not taken from them in taxes. Ooh, interesting. Rich estates uh, will use their wealth on many things, uh, primarily to invest into the things that benefit them, but will also build things that benefit the country. Do we have an automated construction queue? Hell yeah, brother. Next week, we will talk about a few concepts that are uh, new to the game that have not been present in previous games. Previous games, he says, like it's not a previous EU4, or Europe Universalis, as well as talk about proximity, control, maritime presence, and all concepts needed to talk about, needed to be talked about in detail before we go into the economy system. Okay, big nice. So, someone uh, has kindly uh, aggregated a bunch of forum posts by Johan and then kindly also deleted their account. Um, so, uh, we are going to be taking a look at these. Uh, going through it, I think that maybe we can zoom in, but in either case, we can do some of this. Um, it's a little bit uh, the it's a little bit hard to read, uh, but uh, we see that uh, the correct start date is April first, thirteen thirty seven. So now, now the date we have to try and nail down is going to be the end date. I forgot, um, and I forgot this gentleman. Is this? Uh, is this, uh, the Sun King Louis the Fourteenth? If it is, this gives us a hint that the game is going to at least extend to this period. Um, but, um, okay. Uh, I'm, I, people will come out of the woodwork regarding figuring out the end date, I think, quite a bit better than me. So, uh, we'll wait to hear from them. Uh, but, why we have pick, picked this date, uh, of April 1337, uh, it starts before the Black Death, which gives, creates an early game challenge. France's system of feudal loyalty is tested as Edward III is about to be embarked on the Hundred Years' War. There is still a colony on Greenland, 
we have Byzantium, but the Ottomans are about to expand, so we're going to get a lot of Byzantium and Joyous, because Byzantium is almost sure to be stronger. The rise of Timur is soon to happen. Some of the powers are at their zenith, but facing big challenges such as Mali, Delhi, or Yuan, um, which we I probably will love to play Yuan. Uh, some uh, others at their start... I didn't like playing Ming in EU4, though. Uh, some others uh, are at their start, like the Aztecs, uh, Cusco... Um, Maja Palit or the uh, Ashikaga Shogunate. Uh, we will get to model transitions from feudalism to modern states. Um, now, modern states, again, this is going to be a little bit of a hint as regards to what we are talking about uh, in terms of end date. We will get to model the transition from feudal levels, levies to standing armies. New institutions are blooming in Italy and the rest of Europe, such as the Renaissance or banking. The HRE is at a moment of change with three dynasties, uh, uh, Witzelsbach, Luxembourg, and Habsburg, von Chinberg, competing for it, and the Golden Bull has not yet been enacted. Um, this is something that a lot of people thought that the HRE would have to be already formed, which is why they were saying there's probably a later date. Looks like we're not seeing that. Catholic Church is at its height, and military orders are uh, crusading in the northern Europe and the Mediterranean, but the Pope resides in Avignon, which will lead the Western schism with Rome. England's control in the Isles is waning as Bruce loyalists press the advantage in the Scottish Wars of Independence, and the Gaelic-Irish chieftains begin to reclaim a large tracts from the English lordship. Meanwhile, uh, the seeds for the last, last great Welsh rebellion are being sown. Big nice. Um, freedom! No, wait, that's Scottish. Just kidding. We was outside. An intricate balance of power between in Iberia between the Christian kingdoms and the last Muslim footholds. I always liked playing Iberia as the as the Muslims, because I thought it was an interesting thing, uh, like, historically speaking, like, so whoever controls Iberia, right, um, controls what religion would have eventually spread to the new world. And I always thought that that was interesting because if colonialization just happened a few hundred years earlier or something like this, which I'm not saying that it would have or should have or anything like this, but um, we would have everyone in the new world would have been like uh, Muslim instead of Christian or, or not everyone. But you you get the point. Um a different balance of power in regions uh, such as Eastern Europe, the Middle East, uh, or Southeast Asia, uh, step hordes, and their successors of Eurasia from the Mediterranean to the Pacific. Okay, so we are going to be going through a lot more of these, and there are a lot. They're not all that long. I think that's probably the longest one. Some we will be able to read here, uh, but see... This is an, an example of a very short one. Our research and marketing team has lots of details on what target audience are, and they can elaborate on this much further. Um, so uh, for me, though, the target audience is people that love historically immersive map games. Okay, here we have. What causes game performances badly scaling design where performance uh, scales badly with the growth of X or Y? Um, Badly scaling design. We're performance scaling badly with gross of X or Y. You mean like Victoria 3's discrete pop entities causing lag as they splinter more and more, leading to stimul- Ah! Sh fish shaking the air. The most common is a uh, huge AI empires fighting another empire with the pathfinding or large uh, uh, evaluation. So, um... Uh, this you you have yeah okay the second most common is bad script for content where the script evaluations are overly cost uh overly costly and they don't need to be luckily project caesar starts uh the game with two absolute huge empires near the yuan nearby with yuan and golden horde which means we can be on top of it so they're going to get to test a, what a lot of performance like um performance tanking things are going to be at the start i guess um I wish we. I wish this was cropped in such a way we could see the question he's responding to, like this, um, where he's responding. What do you think the mission tree modders uh, will be working now, and why aren't there mission trees? If you don't mind my asking, I said this game will not have EU4 style mission trees. Not that the game would not have mission trees. Besides, there are dozens of other types of flavorful content besides missions, many of which are entirely unique to this game. So that's exciting too, because I am. I so I. I wish there was a lot of more flavor for Victoria Three, for example. Most of you know victoria 3's primary gem um but we see that uh uh I, it doesn't necessarily have to be an emission tree so i'm i'm excited uh reading this type of thing um it's also annoying to see mission uh seeing systems like mission tree expansions in eu4 take six months to, uh, to a year to add with 10 new ones with unique flavor uh mechanics meanwhile two modders can make the same update at least what's possible in two to three weeks 
And Johan responds, considering we have contacted, uh, contracted and or hired some of the most experienced and famous EU4 mission tree modders in the last few years, I'd be very surprised about that. I know that he said very ambitiously uh, that it's supposed to have like as much content as EU4 on release, which I'm, I'm, of, I'm sus, I, that seems sus to me, but um, we'll see if there is as much EU5 like content and stuff like mission trees and unique stuff um, on release. Um, and then here's Imperator. If Imperator taught me one thing, and I think this is the biggest thing, everyone always brings up Imperator, like it's a good predictor of like what Paradox is gonna go in the future. They're like, oh, they're just gonna scuff it up. Like Imperator was probably a very expensive learning lesson. And I think that the studio probably learned, but if Imperator taught me one thing is uh, is that nobody remembers the amount of content the a game had at launch. They compare it to the state it is in now. EU4, Stellaris, Hoei 4, all had an insane amount of content, but our goal is to is the amount and variation of the game should be on par with that at release. So they want EU5 on release, or sorry, EU5 on release to have as much content as EU4 does, like right now, uh, which, oh, I mean, like, this is ambitious, but this is also, this isn't a forum post, right? I don't think Johan should necessarily be, or the, the, the developers should be necessarily held to uh, account for the forum post things that they make relative to stuff like their actual public facing dev diaries like the Tinto Talks here. Okay, um, let's see. Wait, are you saying that the current levels of EU4 content, someone asked for clarification immediately, is the goal for definitely not EU5 at release? That would be extremely ambitious. If so, if you are saying uh, that you're aiming for what those games had at release, that's fine and also uh, sounds much more reasonable. What it now has uh, basically, and this, this forum post is actually very key because this guy refers to it as definitely not EU5 and Johan does not correct him or add any sort of correction saying Project Caesar like so if if it was not eu5 right the way you would be inclined to respond to this type of um post or uh message would be uh project caesar will have as much on release as the game does uh currently but when he says what it now has basically right what this indicates is that this reference of definitely not eu5 does not merit correction from johan right he uh, johan doesn't feel like he needs to correct definitely not eu5 so he just responds to the question again if he was making a game that was called you know knickknack paddywhack uh one uh then he would say project caesar will have this at release right because he would be saying that this guy didn't refer to the thing um correctly and so okay um although there are people who think that it will be called uh, like Earth Universalis for or something or Earth Universalis, but that's just like missing out on the marketing uh, of your IP. Like even if you wanted to make something a little bit more um, or a little bit less Eurocentric and you wanted to call it Earth Universalis, um, which I, is something that people have been speculating because it would maintain the same acronym, right? It would be EU. Um, I think uh, it would not be, it doesn't make sense from a marketing and IP perspective. Um, even if you were trying to be more Earth-oriented. Um, please don't make the war system like VIC-3. Just follow EU4 and CK3 style. Yes, it will not be like VIC-3. Okay. Uh, Johan started coding for it in Q2020, and as mentioned in the uh, first step diary, it likely has not been in development longer than that, as discussing potential features, etc. Not really. We started talking about the design at the same time. So they started in Q2 of 2020, it appears. Uh, so it's been four years in the works. What societal features, uh, what society value changes on their own, or is it a min-max that will move towards, uh, move on its own and we will have to decide, and we will have to move a slider? Sliders announced. They move uh, more over time depending on what choices you make in different parts of the game. So sliders, sadly, will probably not be returning. Rest in peace, sliders. Shout out to E3. Um, I don't trust them to make a solid a notification system like an EU4, and they respond uh, how the notification system is going to be. A red, yellow, green banner alert system? Yes, we have it. A configurable message system like all EU, uh, EU games? Yes, we have it. Like all EU games, let's, let's say it louder for the people on the back. Like all EU games, this implies that this is an EU game. Again, EU, EU5. Um, uh, we should say it with our chest too, but we're too lazy. It's, uh... 
like all EU games. There, we said it with our chest. Okay, so, again, looking like EU5. Uh, in CK3, when you capture a fort, you get the entire province instead of the location IRC. So basically, I think that a uh, province will have one fort. If you capture the fort, you capture and occupy all the locations within that province. However, I'm not sure if it would work on location if locations within the province are divided within multiple nations. Uh, reasonable enough kind of question. It's not like CK3. But there are several other mechanics alleviating concerns of having to siege every location to win a war. And it's, um, to be fair, playing uh, Imperator was, it was super nice being able to put the, uh, the armies, set them to carpet siege, just like give them the AI behavior to carpet siege, which was uh, very, very refreshing. So I hope that they have the same automation. Will EU4 type mission trees make an appearance, uh, re a re reappearance in Project Caesar? Definitely not EU5. Um, see, here he refers to it as Project Caesar, so there's no need to clarify. No, there will likely be uh, another type and style of mission trees. Okay, mission trees, but different style. He said that elsewhere as well. Uh, the term core province lost all its meaning in EU4, as you could just turn any province into a core uh, in a few years by spending a bit of mana. Will Project Caesar have a more similar... Have a more similar... I'm not sure I like more similar, but also, should we be ripping on uh, Sperenk? For his, his copy? Probably not. Uh, more similar uh, conception of core provinces as in EU3. Neither like those, but something different. Okay, fair. Uh, in the case of a con uh, constitutional monarchy, will there be one leader at the helm? Or would there be a separation of monarch and prime minister uh, be reflected with the use of the cabinet feature? Could constitutional monarchies in different countries empower more uh, the prime minister than the monarch and vice versa? Nothing I can talk about in details yet, which, I mean, doesn't imply too terribly much other than um, there is some sort of mechanic. Um, okay, this one, this one we might want to open up a new one. I'd like to say on behalf of uh, everyone, when including the call to parliament mechanic, assuming it's meant to be inspired by the English parliament, which had been called two times a year, include a mechanic uh, which auto calls the parliament, perhaps even allows us to set a tiny uh, time interval, like allowing us to call parliament every X months, where X would be defined by a slider. Okay, sliders, we're trying to bring them back. Uh, depending on the pacing of the game though, uh, I'm assuming it'll be a, a bit dumbed down. So you have, the, uh, so you have to call parliament only very, uh, uh, only every, for example, five years, so it's not overwhelm the player. Of course, depending on how much of a player interaction there, there is with the player. Either way, having a button you have to press, you have to press, uh, th uh, thoroughly throughout the game on a set tyrant roll just feels tedious unless it gives opportunity to automate. Currently, it's on a two-year cooldown, and the states do, uh, does not care if it's been less than five years, and every month after that, they get more and more anxious. So no, it's not a major click at, at X time. Okay, fair. Uh, will the U UI be changed compared to currently basic one for testing purposes during development? UI has changed uh, any times in the past. Oh, UI has changed any times in the last four years and will change. Uh, I assume that's supposed to be many times uh, in the past four years and will change uh, more before you release. The current one basically has no artwork yet except the images you see. Okay, let's do this. Very interesting. From the looks of it, uh, it seems that the overarching system of the game is taking your nation from a feudal system to a roughly post-Westphalian system. So someone's trying to get at the end date. Uh, except I don't remember when Westphalia was. So, some questions. How customizable are the government types? Can we set term limits on the Republican rulers, for example? Are interregnums a thing? When you refer to countries that aren't based on the locations on the map, do those have government types that aren't enumerated in the dev diary or are they specific countries? Also, definitely a 1337 start date. So, one, customizable, very much. Two, are interregnum is a thing? Yes. Three, uh, when you refer to countries that aren't based on locations on the map, something completely different for future dev diary. Okay, the teaser. And finally, armies be only being able to reinforce in friendly owned territories is something I really like. Which, that's kind of not something I like. I think it should be according to a supply line and the you the ability for to for you to reinforce should get harder as you get further but like if you have a supply line you can send people through the supply line so they might not be the best but you can send them so that's the first batch which was four days ago and then one day ago there was another batch the for another batch was made 
for they were all of them deceived. Another batch was made, deep in the fires of the, the forums. Uh, since you're looking for community input, I dislike the design choice uh, popular in recent times where you would take something from outside, uh, from where, which takes you outside of the map slash game at a click. CK3 doing that a lot. Man, I think CK3 is like different because it's RP. Uh, and prefer the way it was done uh, with the first EU4 and CK2 where all the menus uh, are at the top of the game. Uh, I would like it. This, this is like a really long thing. Uh, if I recall correctly, because we've read through this before, uh, he just wants like the map to be kind of present. Uh, he wants to avoid royal court style mechanics, um, this type of thing, um, etc. And uh, Johan responds kind of uh, succinctly. All our menus are just in sidebars, except the ledger and some re unit reorganization windows, just like EU4. Ironically, we used uh, we used to use much more full screen in older games like Hoey 2, Hoey 3, and Vic 2, which I think he says that he liked. Um, but okay, so we're, we have an idea that we're going to be map focused, and then there's going to be sidebars for information. Okay. Um, games get boring. Hopefully that's readable. Yep. Games get boring when things become too repetitive uh, and or challenging is lost. Um, this is one of the main focuses we have right now uh, with this game to make sure that there's good pacing and in the challenge or in the challenge. So not too easy, not too hard. Okay. Rivers are an on off uh, per map mode. Hot. So we can turn on or off the rivers uh, for each map. Cool. This um, it will depend on the war. If you are England controlling the sea and you only use a small... Ah, oh, you make my head smaller. Sorry, apologies. Let's do this. Uh, if you are England controlling the sea and you only use a small merchant army, fighting in others' territories is not going to impact you that much. If you're fighting in your own territory, you, use, you le levies for too long, squandering your armies on assaulting forts and ignoring logistics and weather, your army may be a long-term loss for your country. Interesting. Okay. I'm guessing we're going to have to kind of click on each one of these on the same one. I remember someone, Alderaan, putting together a spreadsheet, spread them, of the population data for Mayu and taxes and saying that they had decent numbers for 1,500. Wonder what become of that. Alderaan became an employee of Paradox Tinto since early autumn of 2020, spending much of his time working on maps and population setup for Caesar, together with other parts of the content design team. Okay. Shout out to Alderaan. Looking for love in all Duran places. All right. Uh, in EU4, the model of uh, conquest is you fight total wars. This is something we do not want to see in Project, Project Caesar. Thank you. I like feeling. I like being able to chill without feeling like I'm making a mistake, which is definitely the case in Victoria 3. I feel like if you chill, you're just making a mistake. If you're not using your infamy decay, you're losing it. Really hoping that gets changed uh, with uh, spheres of influence or sphere of influence. Apparently, there's no S. Someone told me this, but it's just so hard to say it. You know, singular. Uh, anyway, for us, some of, for some of us to play test eyes emoji. Eventually, I wish Johan did eventually eyes emoji. But, alas, poor York. We knew him well, Horatio. Uh, as with any game, a meta will develop and Europeans will be colonizing Mexican gold by 1360s law. Hee hee, not gonna happen. Okay, so colonization's gonna have some difficulties with it. Uh, that's what we could get there. Oh no, the lag. Wait, why is my internet lagging? Okay, just kidding. Um, considering something about one test, a 1% uh, of customers play a start date other than the earliest, it's very unlikely there will be another starting date for Project Caesar. This has been said kind of in multiple spots by Paradox, but they, no more different starting dates. I've said this repeatedly in the past, basically no game released in the last 10 years has had more than one or two starting dates. Uh, 1618 or, uh, 1789 starting date would be a very interesting point to play as. I can't believe I didn't put this in my head before. Would be a very interesting part to play as, but Project Caesar is not EU2 or even EU4, where a new start date is something that can be done in a few months at most. So this tells us if 1789 is a reasonable start date, right? Then this this tells us that the game's gonna at least extend some time beyond that, which is very, very exciting. I wonder if it's, so what I've been suspecting is that it comes up flush with the Victoria 3's start date. That is the end date is just January 1st, uh, you know, uh, 1836. And this kind of fits well with that. Like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna play to 17, 
uh, 94, just five years, if you're talking about the possibility of a start date of 1789. So this is probably the most substantive thing I have seen regarding a start date or re regarding an end date. We know that the end date will at least be 1790, right? At the very, 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 very earliest based on this, I think. Um, and then Project Caesar is not EU2 or even EU4, where a new start date is something that can be uh, done in a few month, days a month. This, again, further is... I, I mean, like, it's EU5 now, but, like, just, like, looking at hints for more and more, it's EU5, my guys. Um, you're comparing it to the uh, other EUs, but not EU3. Okay. Big nice. Ooh, this one's different. Will there be modding capabilities to add new bookmarks? Bookmarks akin to CK system, blah, 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 etc., etc. Yes. Part of the reason power creep is an enormous amount of things you can stack together, especially mission tree bonuses. Uh, in the department for content of Project Caesar, we have a rule that says no modifier stacking. And this is pretty big because my understanding is this is kind of the EU4 metagame. You stack a bunch of really good modifiers and then you go, lo, 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 I have space marine troops. Um, if that's not possible, then that changes things, but then it also makes it, you you have to get more creative about uh, how you are assigning a new power level and this type of stuff, so that'll be interesting. Um, the problem here isn't that Johan thinks the city of Venice's location on an island isn't important, but the, the developers are seemingly are prioritizing a consistent map when it takes... Uh, when it comes to scale of islands over a functional map. This is similar to UI UX mistakes we have seen over and over again in Imperator CK and Vic3. Um, uh, one of the points of these forums is to exist to provide feedback before it's too late to change things. The late, let's wait and see seems like a rather bad idea. Uh, Johan responds, there are plenty of islands so far that have been exaggerated in size to fit, but they were already talking about, they were already about 50 to 100 times as big as Venice Island, so this came, it would be a dramatic change for uh, the real life to the game. So I guess Venice isn't going to be an island. Um, shout out to Venice. I see a valuable post by Johan in a locked relative thread and hope uh, to, it's allowed to reply to it here. And ho I hope that it's allowed to reply reply it here okay uh i think the main reason for this result is the lack of playability in eu4's later history included uh the updated chaotic historical setting the bloated workload due to dlc stacking the mission trees that mainly focus on a single narrative point it's clear that the dates other than 1444 are largely ignored in the later uh, late history of eu4 and Johan responds, it was the case long before we made lots of DLC. We even spent a lot of time updating uh, 1618 for Art of War, and that did not change people's behavior regarding only playing one kind of the, the first start date and not always going super deep into the game. Um, it wasn't the 18th century that was bad uh, besides army. It wasn't the 18th century that uh, that was bad besides army inflation. It was the revolutionary, revolutionary mechanic uh, that you couldn't really interact with that I didn't like if I made it that far. I forgot it's from a DLC even. I hope it's got, uh, I hope it's gone or reformed. Neither the original uh, Revolution's mechanics nor the new one were good. Bang, bang, shots fired. Will Venice be an island? Currently not. The island of Venice is tiny, barely five square kilometers. He's responding again to the Venice question. This is one-tenth the size of Manhattan. Wow. Yeah, okay, that seems reasonable. Should Tinto use uh, great families for their next game? No, it's not a good fit for the game. And that is the last of the aggregated um, forum posts we have seen from Johan. But from it, I think the two most substantive ones, right, are the one where he talks about different start dates. And he says that it would be cool to have a 1337 start date. Or, a, sorry, not a 13. The one where it's cool, or at least in terms of giving us information, it would be cool to have a 1789 start date. This gives us an enormous hint as to what the end date would be. And then also, the very first one over here, where he says, confirms very, very explicitly, that the start date will be April 1st, uh, 1337. Uh, so this is pretty interesting. If you guys have found any of the forum posts and this type of stuff interesting, or perhaps implying information um, that uh, is not readily explicit, please put it in the comments, because we're, we're trying to figure some stuff out. We're trying to figure out as much stuff as we can about, uh, you know, 
Project Caesar as it would. Big nice on the map. We know the start date. We know that the end date has to be after this. Um, and so, uh, and then we also learned a little bit, a little bit about estates. But overall, the estate stuff was not as exciting, I think, as the forum post. So if you like this, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. You know, do the YouTube algorithm thing and have a good day.